Welcome back to Launch Window Research. Today, I was able to interview Justice Killian, who is a partner at none other than Space Capital. In this video, you will learn what space industry trends the professionals have their eyes on, what Space Capital is doing to uplift the entire industry, and a bit about how you can become a better space industry investor yourself. I hope you enjoy. Justice, thank you for joining us today. We're so happy to have you here. Yeah, happy to chat. Love it, talking about you know space and the opportunity to invest in in this technology. So, so you're a partner at Space Capital. You've been there roughly close to when it was founded about five years ago. So, what was it like in those early days, and why was Space Capital founded? Yeah, um, so I joined with my partners Chad and Tom um, about five years ago now. You know, the opportunity really is a function of innovation that's been happening in the launch architecture. So we've had commercial launch vehicles for a long period of time. Uh, we've had government launch vehicles as well, like the space shuttle. And you know the cost to operate those vehicles were incredibly high. So SpaceX came onto the market. They, they launched you know, their first rocket in 2009. Uh, in 2010, they published their uh, launch pricing, which that may seem like not a big deal, but there was no transparency around launch pricing before that. It was always a custom, you know, uh, offering. And um, in 2015, you know, they demonstrated reusability, which further brought down launch costs. And so what happened is that enabled a whole wave of entrepreneurs to look at the way satellite architecture and data collection from orbit is um, done and create new innovative approaches to that. Now we're at a point where, you know, uh, a student in high school can build a small sat or a CubeSat and deploy it from, you know, deploy it into space. So radical changes. And so our firm really followed that same trajectory. You know, once SpaceX opened up sort of the, the reduce the barriers to entry and allowed this wave of entrepreneurial innovation, um, you know, my partner Chad started investing in this category in 2012. We set up our first fund in 2015, and um, yeah, we've we've grown 20x, you know, since that time. So uh, it's it's been exciting, um, and you know, we're just getting started. What are the main industry trends that Space Capital is looking at right now, going into the next decade? Well, I think a lot of people, when you think of space, the first thing that comes to mind is the Apollo landing, the International Space Station, maybe Elon Musk, you know. Um, the majority of that, what, what comes to mind is, you know, humans in space. And, and that really is not the venture investing landscape. You know, uh, Virgin Galactic and, you know, uh, Bezos, they've gotten a lot of buzz recently for, you know, putting people in low Earth orbit. Um, but that is a very small sliver. I mean, that's like less than 1% of the activity that's happening from a, a venture and commercial perspective. Um, Space largely is, you know, from a from an investing perspective, it's about data. And there's three main areas where there's opportunity. One is um, built on GPS technology, which is around positioning and timing. And there's a tremendous amount of innovation that's happened within that. Um, we're now looking for a, a future, a next generation capability that um, improves on GPS. So that could be satellite based, that could be here on Earth, it augments that signal. Um, there's a lot of work that's happening in that area. Um, the second major vertical is around um, geospatial intelligence and imagery. So there's a tremendous amount of new data sets, whether it be optical, SAR, hyperspectral, multispectral, thermal, um, that help us understand our world in ways that we're just beginning to sort of grasp. And um, it's it's very likely that you know that technology will fuse with you know di you know video game engines and help us create a digital twin of our physical world that is updated in near real time, and so we can understand changes, we can monitor assets, we can make decisions um, without ever having to go anywhere. We can just see it and monitor it and and get alerts based on that change detection. So there's a tremendous amount of opportunity there. And then the last is, is really what a lot of people um, have heard, you know, from a SpaceX perspective or an Amazon perspective is satellite communications. And this is that next generation of on-orbit satellites that are being put up, um, delivering near broadband speeds, you know, to users around the world. And we're really excited about this technology and the convergence with 5G and 6G 
that that terrestrial um, capacity with that KUKA band um, uh, wavelengths will actually create what we think will be a ubiquitous connective layer that goes across our planet. So anywhere at all times, you'll have access to high speed connectivity. And that really opens up a whole new world of what we can do and, and how we communicate and how we rely on the internet to make mission critical decisions. And so we're just at the infancy of some of those opportunities. Um, so that's where the market is at today. There is a tremendous opportunity that is coming down the line, and it is a function of SpaceX's new Starship launch architecture. And that's going to enable an on-orbit economy to start to, about, to develop. The launch costs will finally be at a point where it makes sense to actually start to manufacture, build, and deploy assets at a larger scale on orbit. And so this means you know, manufacturing. This also means habitats. Um, and then, you know, we're also starting to see the government show um, interest and support with their CLIPS program for, you know, the lunar surface, building landers and rovers to understand what, you know, is happening there and to start to do early development work on the lunar surface. So um, all of those are incredibly exciting. They're a very small percent of what's happening, you know, less than 1% of the investment capital that's been deployed over the last 10 years but it could be a much larger percentage, you know, in the coming decades. Your company recently invested in Lunar Outpost, I believe, which is really exciting. And I believe you just joined as a board advisor for that company. So what can you tell us about that company and the lunar economy as a whole? Yeah. So Justin Cyrus is the founder there. He, you know, um, awesome technical guy and, and business mind. Uh, we work with the company for, uh, you know, almost 12 months in preparation for them raising their first round of funding. And they've been really smart in how they've thought about their product. Um, a lot of this you know, frontier emerging market space opportunity, there just isn't a market that exists. So that means there's no existing customers willing to pay for these services. The lunar surface is unique in that you have NASA's CLIPS program that does anchor some of that activity, but, um, so what we've been working with the team, you know, to do is think about one, you know, how do they capture that space opportunity, building a great, you know, unique um, rover and um, a robotics platform that is is incredibly robust, not only for the lunar surface, but also back to, back here on Earth. There's needs for extreme, you know, environment robotics platforms and services that touch on mining and also touch on our energy production and remote asset monitoring. And so they have actually built um, a business that serves um, both the lunar market and the terrestrial market. And they're using a product roadmap there, you know, to um, raise government money and work with government customers to do really innovative things that can be commercialized in multiple ways. And so that's what got us really excited. I mean, the team has been, you know, built a really sophisticated product roadmap and thought about balancing, you know, the benefits of multiple markets. And, you know, they're doing really great things. They're going to be launching, you know, to the lunar surface, you know, depending on launch windows, but, you know, here in the next year or so. And uh, it's going to be incredibly exciting to have a private company, you know, navigating on the lunar surface is going to be great. Yeah, that is going to be really incredible. And I'll say for anybody watching, Space Capital does have a podcast where they do host the CEO of Lunar Outpost. So I'll put a link to that in the description. Definitely worth a listen. So Space Capital has a few products or side projects going on right now, namely Space Angels and Space Talent. What can you tell us about those and what are they going to contribute to the space economy? Yeah, great question. So, you know, what I love about our work, you know, our venture fund anchors everything that we do. Um, it's a seed stage venture fund. We get in with a company very early and we help them mature the technology and, and get it to product market fit, which is typically a million dollars or more in recurring revenue. We have two products that we manage that are separate. They're digital products that support the work we do as venture investors. So the first one is a, a free career platform um, called Space Talent. And we recognize that our long-term success 
is not only dependent on, you know, the, the small portfolio that we're able to build of, you know, 15, 20 companies, it's also dependent upon the hundreds or thousands of companies within the space economy that are being built. And we want them to be successful. And to do that, they need great folk, great people, great talent of diverse backgrounds and experiences to help them grow. And so it makes sense for us to pay for this platform to be developed and be free, not only for companies, but also for you know inquiring minds that are looking for career paths in this area. So um, what we provide is a, a jobs board. It helps you find and search, you know, and get updates around jobs that fit your interests and your career path. We provide a talent network that um, we work with several hundred recruiters at the portfolio at the companies listed on the site, and so they can search your profile. We also directly help place candidates in our network at our portfolio companies and and in the broader ecosystem. We have a new product called Gravitate which allows you to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people in our network that are matched to your skill set and, and interest that you have. And it's a simple, easy way to build your knowledge of what's going on and expand your network if you're serious about building a career in this area. And the last is we also allocate money, um, pre-seed capital uh, for founders. And so we've had over 50 companies that have come through this. We now have backed several companies that have come through Space Talent in very early stages, pre-seed checks, you know, anywhere from sort of, you know, uh, a couple hundred thousand all the way up to a million million dollars. So um, we're really excited about that. And we're excited that, it, that all of those services can be free. So that's Space Talent. Um, we also have a platform called Space Angels, and this is for individuals around the world, most of which are um, entrepreneurs themselves. They're curious about investing. Um, they're accredited investors, and they want to have access to some of the opportunities in our portfolio or, or more broadly, where we invest you know, in these sort of opportunistic areas where there's longer time horizons. And so Space Angels allows us to do that. It's um, sort of like an opportunity fund for us to deploy capital, continue follow on in the best winners, and focus on technology that's maybe a little bit longer term than what a traditional venture capital could invest in. Just personally, um, sort of selfishly, does Space Talent currently cover internships? Yeah, absolutely. If you look at the jobs board, you just type in intern. I mean, it'll filter for, you know, there's probably 50 or 100 live internship opportunities, you know, so you could you know, very quickly in succession, just hit up all the ones that you're most excited about. And yeah, I mean, it makes it easy to find that. That does sound like it will save me a lot of time this winter, so I'm definitely going to use that. And I'll leave a link to both in the description. My next question is a bit more tailored towards your personal experience. What advice would you give to aspiring space investors? What should they do? Um, how should they educate themselves? What you know pitfalls should they avoid? Well, space, you know, is a a uniquely technical domain. You know, we're we're still a relatively small venture firm. You know, um, compared to a lot of a lot of the big ones out there, and um, well, you have to be discerning. The physics of the solution have to be able to close, and so that technical requirement's important. Not only that, you know, the ability to unlock the market within space requires a pretty deep understanding of the customer. And some of those customers are hard to reach. They can be governments or large corporations. And so it's important to have an understanding of who those are. So I would just suggest, you know, pick your partners wisely when you're investing. You know, it does require diligence. Diligence does matter and the ability to really answer some tough, complicated questions. Um, the other thing that I would say is, you know, it's also fun, you know, and, it, and this should be, you know, maybe sort of a, a higher risk, higher reward part of your portfolio. And so sometimes the best way to get involved, if you're able to allocate a small amount of money, a very small portion of your portfolio to do this type of investing, you can learn a lot. And, you know, a lot of those companies are going to fail. And, um, you know, just by going through the process of evaluating an opportunity, you know, asking questions and putting money to work, you know, you're going to learn through that process and it'll help you, you know, get smarter over time. 
So those are the two areas that I would, you know, pick the partners wisely that you choose to work with. And if you have the ability to take a little bit of risk, you know, just jump in and start learning, um, you know, uh, so. Yes, I have one last question. I picked up from your LinkedIn that you like scuba diving. Scuba diving is just about as close um, as somebody on earth can get to spacewalking. So if you were given the opportunity, is that something you think you would do? Oh, I mean, I totally agree. Yeah, you know, scuba diving is like entering into an entirely new world, you know, uh, where you're weightless and neutrally buoyant. And um, so that is one of the reasons I do it. It feels like a real grand exploration. I mean, we almost know less about our oceans than we do about uh, certainly the near space around our Earth. Um, but yeah, I would absolutely go to space. And um, if I had the opportunity, it's, you know, my goal, uh, you know, I'll be, I'll be, you know, 50 in well, 10 years or so. So my hope is that by the time I'm 50, I'll have, you know, been able to make enough money to pay for a ticket to space. So we'll see. <laughs> That's amazing. And we'll be rooting for you. So, well, thank you. thank you for joining us for this very brief interview. Great. Well, you know, if you're interested, you can certainly learn more about, you know, the work that we do, space count spacecapital.com. And, um, you know, if you're excited about a career path here, you know, space talent is an awesome free resource. So, you know, thanks for the time. Excited to share the story and uh, hope you all have a chance to dig in. Of course. Thanks.